In this lecture, we will discuss CSS3 in depth. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets, and they're used for describing the look and formatting of a document written in a markup language such as HTML. CSS3 is the latest evolution of the Cascading Style Sheets language. It adds new features to CSS such as rounded corners, shadows, gradients, transitions or animations, as well as new layouts like multi-columns, flexible box, or grid layouts. There is a course manual that you can download for free, and it includes all of the code examples and descriptions from these video tutorials. You can download it by going to hofstech.com slash webdevfundamentals. You can also get a Kindle version on Amazon. Links to these resources are in the description for your convenience. First, we need to add a style tag inside of the head section. Within the style tag, we're going to write the CSS for our web page. Let's start with defining the styles for the entire body of our HTML document. The syntax for any CSS class is dot class name and then style and properties. First, let's give our body some padding. No, not by eating a giant cheeseburger. Padding ensures that the body contents will not be on the very edge of the page. Next, we will add a font weight, which will determine how thick or thin the characters will be. Then we need to specify the font family. I'm using a pretty standard one here. No one uses serifs anymore. And we will also set the font size in pixels. Line height is set to 1, so that our lines are always equal to 1 times the font size. Color is the for color, which is mainly the font color. Background color is pretty self-explanatory, but I should mention the RGB color codes. A hashtag followed by six characters is an RGB color code. RGB stands for red, green, and blue, and I have added a link to an RGB color code chart that I like to use to the course manual. And finally, we're setting the margin to zero because we don't want any white space around the body. Let's save and take a look at our changes. It's starting to look better. Next, let's just increase the font size of the heading one tag and change the font color so that it stands out a bit more. Save again and view the changes. It's taking shape, but there's still a lot more to do. Next, we want to apply the same style to both the paragraph and unordered list tags. To do this, all we need to do is separate the CSS element selectors with a comma. Let's just specify the font size, weight, and give it some padding so our text has some room to breathe. Again, let's save and view our progress. Next, we need to make sure our line items display correctly. Here, we're going to specify the UL, LI, CSS element selector, which means that it will apply to LI elements within a UL element. There's no comma, so this is one class, not two. I'm just going to add a bit of padding to the left only and position the list inside of the UL. Without list style position, the bullets would display just to the left of the UL, and that's not what we want. Save and refresh your page. That's much better. So far, we've worked with CSS element selectors. That means we have written CSS classes for existing HTML tags. Next, we will write our own CSS classes and apply them to some HTML elements. We have one div in our page that we need to add a style to. Let's call that style container. The period before the word container is the syntax for a CSS class. Let's give our container a margin of zero auto, which basically means centered. 
zero applies to the top and bottom margin, and auto applies to the left and right. However, our div will not be centered if it is not given a width, so let's do that now. And to wrap it up, let's give it a background color and some padding. To apply our new container CSS class to our div, all we need to do is add the class attribute to the div tag. Let's save again and refresh the page. We're getting there. We need to add a bit more styling to our div, but instead of adding it to the container class, let's add it to another class. That way I can show you how to apply multiple CSS classes to the same element. Now let's create a body content class that just sets some padding on the left and right. Save and refresh. Much better. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is bring that button into the 21st century. Let's create a sort button CSS class. The new things I'm adding here are border radius, which sets how thick or thin the border is, border color I have set to transparent to give it a flat look, which is all the rage with web designers, and text align center, which is pretty self-explanatory. Save and refresh for the last time. You did a great job. This looks like a real page. In the next lecture, we will learn how to use JavaScript to sort the names of our superheroes alphabetically. If you are new to this channel, please click the subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified of our future videos. Click the video on the left for an overview of my Pluralsight course, Tactics and Tools for Troubleshooting Front-End Web Development, and click the video on the right to continue with this course.